Fox Sports Radio NBA analyst, our man, Mr. Eddie House. E House, what's up, bro? What up? How y'all doing? Hey, Chris, you out here dunking on people? Stop it. Hey, all I know is Brian Finley has his podcast and his guests keep talking about my hoop skills, like giving me props. So I'm just, hey, we, I'm just, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Hey, that's respect. <laughs> when, when, when people shout it out for you, you don't got to do it. Right, that's respect. right, only, right. Only problem is that's Dr. Seuss, and I think it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, E-House, let, look, look. First hour we start off the show, I said it with my chest. I said it with bass in my voice. I said the Brooklyn Nets cannot win the championship without James Harden. Am I wrong? No, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think it's going to take all of them. I think the reason why is we know how dynamic James is with scoring the basketball, but his ability to facilitate to other to others and make others better, but then also have the ability to take over a game and be a guy that can hit, hit you upside the head for 40 uh, 50, you know, or at 30 any, at, at every night almost, 30. Or he's a walking 30 ball. But the ability to get everybody involved and keep everybody happy, I think that's something that you, you will, will be missed. I mean, you, you we can't gloss over that fact. Kyrie obviously is a guy that's not willing to be that guy. He's, that's just not his game, though. Right. So, James, that's James' game. So, if – He's not there. It's gonna it's gonna be real difficult, just like we thought at the beginning of the season without James going there. We thought right. they were good. We thought they were a good team, you know. But who put them over the hump? It was James Harden that made everybody start talking like, "Oh my God!" And then they had these other pieces. He's definitely the the catalyst for that team to me. Let me ask you about LeBron. The ankle is gonna miss two more games. Uh, are you concerned about LeBron and just his recovery? And uh, how long this is taking? You know, he's long in the tooth, 18 years, 36 years old. Father time comes for everybody, Eddie. What's the deal on LeBron? I think, I think they're taking their time, but you got to be careful when you're doing that because the, the more you, you start sliding in those standings, then you end up playing in the, 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 the play-in tournament. And to me, that's scary. You know, uh, you don't want to put yourself in that position. Not saying that they won't be able to get over that hump, but you just put yourself behind the eight ball that you have to play extra game. But then on top of that, you don't have home court advantage in any playoff series. And I think that's the thing that, you know, everybody played on the road last year pretty much, you know, being in the bubble. But with fans starting to come back, with you being able to be outside the bubble and be at home, uh, have your home cook meal, sleep in your bed, be around your family, the home court advantage really – comes back into play and I think that's the one thing to me you know my brother's a diehard Laker fan he talks about them all the time and and I say hey man the one thing you don't want to not is play a game seven on the road you don't want to do that especially against a really good basketball team that has a good uh home court advantage so that 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 to me is concerning a little bit but if LeBron comes back firing in all cylinders to me he's still the best player in the world the Knicks are starting to get some attention, Eddie. And um, are they – look, you know Tibbs. He was an assistant coach on your championship team uh, with Boston. Um, talk about the job he's done, like the difference he's made. Because they were terrible last year. Now, all of a sudden, they're the fourth seed in the East. And and then tell me about, like, Julius Randle. Uh, Julius Randle's actually – I mean, he showed signs in other places before. I was going to say, when he was in but L.A. But he's really yeah, playing. He, he looked yeah, good. L.A. He and New Orleans, that. he looked yeah. good. But are you surprised at, at how far he's come or, or not surprised? No, I'm not surprised. We see, like you said, we've seen him playing well in other places. They just were on bad teams. You know, you get uh, – you. The, the spotlight's on you when you're winning and it becomes a little brighter. And it seems like he's thriving in those moments. Uh, he's not running away from it. He's – I like the fact that he, he kisses his son, that he has his family there supporting him all the time. That's something that, to me, makes him feel comfortable. And it, it, it looks like he's in the best place he has been in his basketball life, playing in New York right now. And with Tibbs coming in, one thing Tibbs is going to do is hold you accountable defensively. I think by bringing in a guy like D. Rose, who is a veteran, who's been an MVP, who's went through some hardships through uh, injuries, fought himself back. Guys – can remember this is a young. You got to think also. These a lot of these players are young, so they were seeing D Rose 
at the height of D. Rose. So they're going to listen to what he has to say. So when you have uh, not only the coach speaking it, but then you have a player that the team looked up to when they were younger, and he's just uh, at the same time reiterating what the coach is saying, you – you start to get some belief and and belief, you know, that that's the most important thing. You got to believe it to achieve it. And, and they have, they, they believe that they belong. They believe they're a good team. And, and hell, if you look at how they're playing, they are a good team and they are a team that belongs in the East. Is that a team that's going to win a championship? No. Is it a team that's been one of the best teams that we've seen the New York Knicks put on the floor in a <laughs> long time? Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> let's let's Scotty that Brooks, ain't saying nothing you I know, know that they've been so bad <laughs> Scotty Brooks said that uh Russell Westbrook is the second greatest point guard of all time was that a little hyperbole a little over the top prisoner of the moment seemed a little bit I get it he's had him this guy's won this won Brooks games and all that but the second best point guard of all time is not that a little over the top Y'all, man, I, I, what, whatever he's smoking on, tell him he can keep it because I don't want it. You don't want it. He, no, I don't want that. I don't want that at all because he's out of his mind. Um, right. I mean, you got to say that. So now he's talking about over point guards. So who was the number one point guard? John Stockton? He did have magic. Yeah, he magic. did. Okay, we so, thought so he might there, as well there we say go. he's the best ever. He might, at that right. point, you, you'd have gone that far. So that's what I'm saying. So now we got Magic and Stockton. So he's better than one of those guys. What about Jason Kidd and Steve Nash? You know, so, right. okay. So what about got, Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas? Steph, I was going to say Oscar. Isaiah Thomas. We got a lot of guys that we could say. I think that what we can say about uh, Russell Westbrook is probably he is the most dynamic uh, point guard that we have seen. Most athletic. and I mean, just – by putting up the sheer numbers that he puts up, and, you know, everybody talks about they want to water down the triple-double, and I always come back with this argument. Go to the rec center and or average a triple-double on a day. <laughs> Go to the rec center and average a triple-double on right. a day, and if you can do it, then, okay, that's at the rec center, but do it with the best of the best. And, and some of the numbers he put up, the, you know, they're gaudy numbers when you start talking about his assists and rebounds from that position. Um, I, I think – fantastic player a guy that i would pay money to go watch because he leaves it all on the court he gives you everything every single night he doesn't take it for granted i love his enthusiasm i love his effort that he comes with every single night i love to watch russell westbrook play but don't get me wrong he is not top two point guards to ever play this game he is a fantastic player but top two is a little stress like i said he could keep whatever it is he's smoking (laughs) <laughs> we with you on that, E-House. And, and I agree with you, too, on what you said, because people are starting to take the triple-double for granted. But Russ is the only one averaging. It's not like you got five players now averaging triple-doubles. Now, if Luka and Jokic or, or somebody else starts averaging a triple-double for a few seasons, that's one thing. But you can't. Russ is the only one doing it, so you got to give him his props. Yeah, you. And so when they start doing it, holla at me, Chris, because I know that everybody's out there try, trying to do it. Believe that. And the same thing. I, not that we, not LeBron. If he did, everybody says, "Oh, LeBron could do it if he wanted to." I believe that it in his mind he wanted to, but he understood it took so much right. out of him to try to do that. So he took back, you know, uh, on some of those things. So for me. You have to just marvel at the fact that this guy goes out there and actually does it. Like I said, man, go to the rec center and do it. Go to the rec right. center and do it. Come back to the triple double. If it was double. that easy, you just said it. If it was that you easy, everybody would be doing it. Dudes can't average it right. in the freaking rec center. You're exactly. absolutely right. That's our man, Eddie House, NBA champion. We appreciate it, brother.